So we have seen some very interesting things about the modules which include date, time, time and calendar module, right? And in Python, we also have one more important module which is random where it's a built-in module to generate pseudo random variables because this module plays a very vital role if you wanted to select some elements random elements from a list or shuffle the elements and the best case is we'll be seeing how to generate otp because whenever you go for some transaction page what happens over there the time passes your otp will not be valid right yes so we'll be try to we'll be trying to go for that logic by using random module by generating some random numbers because OTP will be four digit or six digit or depends on the use case of the transaction, right? So let me use our random module where I'll go for creating a new file and I just save this file name as some other name which includes UND random, understanding random because I cannot give random because already random is the name of the module. You can never give the Python file name as the same module name, Python file name as the same module name because random is the module because generally this concept will be widely used when you wanted to generate the random arrays or if you want to, even if you wanted to make sure this same principle will be used in machine learning where you generally go for setting the random state because it will be very widely used random module is basically built in and it is generate it is generally used to generate pseudo random number sequence it is generally used to generate pseudo random if you want to get any kind of random numbers you can directly use this random module but in this we'll be having some multiple functions where i'll be discussing some very widely used things like random dot random randint rand range and how you can shuffle the elements and how you take the choice of it right so let's generally go for that so first let's try to import the module and just take from that so i just import random so when I directly import random, we firstly discuss the very important function which is random method. So when I go for random dot random, when I go for random dot random, it generally returns a random float number between 0 and 1. It's between not n. It's between 0 0.0 to 1.0 because it's a float value between 0 0.0 to 1.0 let me prove that i'll take a is equal to random dot you see when you give random dot you get some functions like random dot random it will give you suggestion x in the interval of square braces 0 it includes 0 it will not reach 1 it is less than 1 that is the principle of it you need not pass any arguments into it you save and when you go for print of a, the main reason for running it here is I can run multiple times. The output changes. When you click on run, you see it's around 0 0.88. Again, I'll run. The value hits on changing. Again, I'll keep on running. You can see it is completely changing every time. And you may not expect same value any time. You may not get same value what I am getting. Right? So this is where you can generate random floats only float value suppose if you want to generate only float values you can use random dot random but the interval is only between 0 and 1 what if if you want to generate some random integers where you can use random dot randint so if you want to get random integers and i'll try to generate use the same logic to generate otp also that's where we'll be using so you need not worry about that so first I'll give b is equal to random dot just wait for the result and just when you say it random dot randint and it clearly tells you when you go for randint it includes both the elements including both the endpoints. suppose if you give 1 to 10 because you're writing you're asking only one value right so let me keep the above things as comment because if you don't want to see the above result you can just keep them as comment so you just execute this you get one time three and you run once more you get another time six but it includes both the endpoints see you got 10 now there you go right so you are getting both the endpoints so randint will always include both the endpoints it includes both the endpoints that's the beauty of it
That's the beauty of using randint. So how do we use this logic to generate OTP? You can use any integer, no? Yes. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll just write a control statement for i in range of whatever, how many values you want? You want five OTPs? Okay. Or five, I want 10. So starting from zero to nine. And what I do is I just give print of, you can take here random dot. What do you wanted to give here? I just wanted to use randint of what is the starting value? I want my first four digit number to last four digit number. That's what, right? So when you start executing this clearly, I'll keep this as comment. And when you save and when you execute it, there you go. Clearly you got four digit OTP. That's what, that's where people generally use when you're trying to build any web app with Python, you can use time module. If you want to keep some OTP transaction, randomly number keeps on changing. Believe me, you can use this method. For sure, you can easily use it. Whatever numbers you want and how many numbers you want, the numbers will not repeat because we are giving specific interval within that. Okay, this is with randint. And even you can also use one more method which includes random numbers within a specific range. That's where we use rand range. Random numbers where you can use within a range. That's where we have one more function called as rand range. Where when you go for rand range function, what does that mean? It includes interval, right? The same way when you go for rand range, it includes start, stop and step arguments. Default start is zero, step will be one. So for that, what you can do is, I'll directly use my for loop and I try to give the same result. So for i in range of, if you want to have six digit OTP, what you can do? You can just take some for i in range of 10 and I want to give print of random dot. Instead of uh, randint, I just take rand range. There you go. You see, choose a random item from range, start, stop, step is one. I'll try to give my first six digit OTP will be starting and the last six digit, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there you go. You will get multiple combinations. If you don't want to see this result, just keep them in quotations. There you go. When you click on hit enter, you see, there you go, six digit OTP, 10 times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And interval, you can pass anything. If you pass some around 10 or so, you can just see the step values. You may not observe clearly, but the step values keeps on changing. Those step values may not be observed clearly because those step arguments will be observed when you pass with less number of values. Okay. If you pass some less number of values, something like 9 to 15, suppose if you pass in this way and you try to understand how does that result. See, you may get, you are getting same number, right? Because you are giving 10. And if you try to give around two and you can clearly understand how does that differs. You see 9, 11, 13, the possible numbers. That's what I told you. If you take some larger numbers, you can clearly understand how does that difference will occur. So anyways, rand range, if you want to give some range of values, we'll prefer it. So first six digit and the last six digit, that's what I have given. And you can place any value within this. You can easily get the logic of generating OTP. Mark my word, this is how people use because I, because even I told I came from development part. So make sure that we use the same logic, right? So when you go for randint, it includes both the interval. You can include range, go for rand range and random dot random, you get the float values. Now, if you want to just go for getting some sequence of elements where you can go for choice. So you can select some random elements by using, I'm telling very, very widely used methods. If you want, you can just go with other methods by giving help. So you can use random dot choice. What do you mean by choice? It selects from a non empty sequence where it gives you some anything. It's a randomly selected part. Suppose I'll give directly. I'll just go with a variable a is equal to random dot I would like to take choice you go for random dot choice of see it takes any sequence I'll give my name first socket 
So you'll be surprised it, it can take any choice because that's where it is choice, right? When you go for print of A, you can clearly see it is giving K first. What happens if I go for the next time? We'll just execute that. It says, depends on the use case. You can take any sequence. Suppose if you want to take anything like, I'll take a list now. I'll just try to take a list and I'll try to show you the result. What happens over there? So instead of a string, you can just take a list because choice plays a very vital role when you wanted to return a randomly selected element. So 1, 0, 2, 5, 8, 4, 8, 5. There you go. When you save and execute, you got 8 first instance. For the second instance, you got 0 and k as you are getting same again. It depends. The number of use cases we gave, again it got t. So this is what you go for choice. When you go for choice, it returns a randomly selected element. And even if you wanted to shuffle the elements randomly, we can use random dot shuffle. Shuffle elements randomly. You can use the very widely used method from, I mean function from random. It is random dot shuffle. Basically, we mainly use rand int and rand range. And if you wanted to generate any such kind of things, we can use shuffle and choice. Let us go for it. If you want, don't want to see the aboriginal, what you will do? You will just keep them in quotation and let's try to execute this. Even if I want more space, what I will do? I will just take them down where I will take some values. A is equal to 1, 4, 5, 8, 2, some string in it and I wanted to go for shuffle. So I just gave print of random dot. What is my function over there? I just wanted to go for shuffle, random dot shuffle of it is expecting x, shuffle list x in place. So it always returns the elements in a list. So if I go for A and let me go for save and execute, see what it is giving over there? None. The reason is we are printing the random dot shuffle and the reason is we cannot directly store the results over there. You should store, you should try to give the list over there. So what I'll do is I'll just give b is equal to random dot shuffle of a and I try to print a here. Let's try to see the result. p514. You see it is being shuffling. I'm printing only a again but I can directly see the values being shuffled over there. That's where you can see shuffle is not storing any result in print. That's where it clearly see what happens if I go for taking any other tuple here. When I save and when I execute, see, tuple object does not support item assignment because you cannot shuffle the elements, right? Yes, so that is the reason you can take mainly list here. Otherwise, you will be throwing an error because so random dot shuffle mainly reorders the elements in the list. You are changing the orders. And even if you go for set also, it is not possible because in set, we don't have indexing and slicing. I'll prove it. That is the reason you can never ever get this. See, set object is not subscriptable. If you don't have slicing, how can you go for shuffling it? Right, it's not possible. So shuffle, choice, shuffle is going for reordering the elements in list. Choice is you want to select random elements and you go for random including both the endpoints where you go for random within a specific range and random dot random will generally go for giving the values between 0 to 1 only in float. So this is how you can generally use random. I hope you enjoyed it because we have generated a four digit OTP or six digit in a very simple line of code. We have just used four lines but with the help of random module. So just keep working on it. For sure you are going to have most fun with Python if you know how to create a module and you can just understand the logic of a function then you can create your own modules. That's where Python is playing a very vital role in every field.